Wasn't me! Hey, loser! Wasn't me! Hey everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and the patch has gone live 20.02 The patch has gone live and we got lots to talk about quickly. Just want to thank everybody. We're only 500 subs away from 25,000. So thank you guys for that. Keep hitting that button. We're going to get there sooner than later. Thank you all so much, but let's get into it. 20.02 is out and well, all the nerfs went live and there's a lot of stuff in the shop as well. There's a ton of stuff to go over. So let's go over it. But I want to start off the video with the title, the thumbnail in mind, which is Blizzard has made a literal game changing announcement. Like this is an awesome, good thing for the community and let's get into what exactly it is. So when the nerfs were announced, it was announced that two watch posts would get nerfed, right? The two and three mana watch posts. And that was, you know, somewhat expected. Some people were surprised, but whatever. Regardless of that, they were nerfed and I made this tweet. I made this tweet undirectly nerfed uh, in 2016 versus undirectly nerfed in 2021. I like making these stupid comparison tweets. They're just fun. They're just memes, but it got me thinking. Mech Janeer Thermoplug, when it was nerfed in 2016, indirectly nerfed um, because Leper Gnome went from a 2-1 to a 1-1, one, one, no dust was rewarded. And fast forward to now, two watch posts that directly affect the power level of Cargal Battlescar were nerfed. And I'm just thinking like, this is a literal direct nerf to Cargal. Cargal thrives on the synergies and the strength of the watch post to be viable. So I made a follow-up tweet. I tweeted at Celestalon, one of the game designers, to ask like, is there any chance we can get full dust compensation? Because this card is effectively nerfed. Its power level goes down in correlation with the watch post. But we've seen in the past when like a Galarkon got nerfed, Cro Crocs didn't get disenchant value. Uh, when Leper Gnome got nerfed, we didn't get Mechjanir Thermoplug value. And I didn't really think much would come of it. And uh, people read it also. So I made posts about it. And then today on the play Hearthstone Twitter account, they announced that Cargal Battlescar will be, there'll be a hot fix put into the game where you will be able to get full dust value for it based on the fact that the watch posts have been nerfed. And they said it will be retroactive up until the patch, the patch notes went out. So if you disenchanted it because you were upset about the watch post and like, well, this card's garbage, you will get dust for it as long as you disenchanted it after the patch notes. And this is an awesome, good change because yes, this card was nerfed just because it's text it stays the same, it's effects stay the same. The watch posts were nerfed and I was kind of troubled by it. I was kind of bothered by it. That's why I made that tweet. And I'm really thankful that Blizzard has made this change. They're showing they're a little less frugal. They're a little less tight uh, these days. They're being a little bit more giving and I think it's a great change and we'll have to see if they keep consistent with that going forward. Let's say, uh, you know, a poison gets nerfed with the, the new rogue weapon that maybe the, the, the compensate us for both of them or whatever. But again, want to let you guys know that. So if you have a Cargal or a Golden Cargal, you will be getting extra dust, uh, whether you disenchant it or not now, because they'll be hot fixing it in. Anyways, enough of that stuff. How is Ladder actually shaping up? Are the nerfs being effective? What's going on? Is Deck of Lunacy still broken? Because I had so many comments. I said Deck of Lunacy was dead and so many people telling me it's going to do nothing. But if you already look at the stats on HS Replay, Mage has already fallen down below 50%. But you can also see Paladin still doing very well. Hunters moved up and the meta is super aggressive at the moment. The meta is very, very aggressive with like aggressive Paladin decks doing very well, aggressive Hunter decks doing well, aggressive Rogue decks, and of course, aggressive Demon Hunter decks. Uh, Orange tweeted this out. It's like, you're gonna, you're gonna get very familiar with this card. He called it the Green Ragnaros. I like to call it the King Crush with Rush. That's what I like to call it. And yes, I had a good feeling that the Demon Hunter would definitely be picking up this deck, like the aggro mid range demon hunter that that runs Illidari Inquisitor was already really close to being a top tier deck. It was basically just Paladin locking it out. It, it did okay against Mage and well, now that deck is gonna be going very well. And if you wanna check it out, twitch.tv slash Zeddy later today, I will be streaming and probably trying it out because I love playing my demonic Illidan portrait. Look how beautiful he is. I will be playing him, so come hang out. But yes, uh, Demon Hunter has been doing very well. And uh, yeah, Mage has fallen down, but basically Deck of Lunacy, I, I, I would say I was wrong. I think I'm wrong in calling it dead, but I feel like it's more of now just a really polarizing card. It'll do really well against the slower decks. Like 
a priest, like a warlock, like a control warrior, but it'll be really bad against the aggressive types, which are doing really well. And one of the reasons the aggressive decks are really prominent is to punish people that were immediately assuming that the Ticketus control warlock would be really good because, well, Ticketus is really busted in a lot of ways, milling cards, but it still really struggles against aggression. It does have a good amount of healing. It does have a good amount of board clears, but this much direct damage from so many different decks is uh, really tougher to keep up with. So if you look at H's replay at the very bottom, you have like the control classes kind of hanging out there. You've got Priest and Warrior at the very, very bottom doing very badly and Warlock kind of in the middle, but this is very early numbers. Things are gonna change a lot as the numbers get refined, but it is safe to say though, the, the meta has definitely changed. And I haven't seen a single pin flinger, which is amazing. I am so sick of having that hey loser thing happen. So if you were worried about getting still having people calling you hey loser all the time it's not going to be at least in game maybe some jackass bully might be saying it to you but at least in terms of uh, uh the, the card game you're probably not going to be hearing much pen flinger so that's kind of how the meta is shaping up of course it's not even close to being resolved well I'll have plenty to talk about in the upcoming weeks about the meta but thought i'd give you like my general impressions wild i don't know entirely yet we might do another follow-up video on that but in terms of standard it's very aggressive and uh yeah very smarky but the last thing i wanted to go over about tw uh, patch 20.02 is there's a bunch of new stuff added to the shop to the marketplace to let you guys know if is it worth it should you be getting it so first there's just a couple of cosmetic things not a big deal uh Suranoyotron's back in the shop you can buy it it's priced the same as Medivh was last week despite Medivh apparently coming with the card back uh, you can get Suranoyo probably it literally lives up to its name it's like the most annoying portrait ever I have it I don't think I've ever used it and I don't plan on ever using it but yeah it's just it's there. If you want Cernoyo, I believe you could buy it for like 10 bucks or 15 Canadian as this probably shows because yes, I am Canadian. Uh, there's also a Goblins card back. You could get that back in like 2014, I think, in November. I actually wasn't playing back then. So it's one of the few card backs I'm missing. So I got it because I'm a whale. I got it. You could get it with either gold or money. And then the most importantly, there's this new Crossroads bundle. It has like four, uh, five, four different expansions in there. You get five packs for each plus two random legendary and big thing here is the legendaries are duplicate protected so you get two guaranteed legendaries right out the gate for like i think it's 20 bucks again it probably says 25 canadian because again i'm canadian and uh yeah you get four from all the most recent expansions and i think the bundle is really worth it if you want to like as a catch-up bundle if you're looking to spend a little bit of money on a hearthstone uh, this is a great way to go you get two guaranteed legendaries you don't have and then you can open up like what you get 20 packs you're probably on average going to get one to two legendaries i open it up i got one legendary uh the average for like legendaries per packs is about 20 so you'll probably get one and if not that sucks but you'll be pretty close on your next one but yeah overall the lots of cool stuff added to the shop pretty much either pretty cheap or just a good deal uh the balance patch seems to be good the meta is definitely changing things will be changing a lot we'll have again lots to talk about so make sure to hit that sub button if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe have a great day and stay salty my friends Thank you.